Well, it's me again, and while my companion's working on Oxid and Pharaoh and... whatever it is he's actually doing back there, it's time to review a movie, and one I'm actually familiar with this time. So since he's wearing the coat, I'm wearing the suit. Because clearly there's not enough people on the internet reviewing old movies in casually formal attire. The Paper Brigade, later Gunther and the Paper Brigade, is a 1996 movie from director Blair Tro, which I bet I'm pronouncing wrong, who directed several family films about ten years after graduating from Brigham Young University, his latest being Meet the Mormons, a documentary on the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I've had a hard time pinning down who this movie was distributed by, a search says Lucadia Film Corporation, but a VHS copy I have says Sandstar Home Entertainment, and a different edited down VHS I got says Feature Films for Families along with the DVD, which has the exact same 15 minutes of the movie removed. That's right, a film that already says it was edited for families was edited down even more. Wait a minute, even the original VHS says it was edited? But it shouldn't be, considering as far as I can tell, Sandstar is just what Lucadia became. There shouldn't have been any further editing done. At least as far as I can tell. This was supposed to be simple, damn it. Oh, and to make matters worse, a lot of people mistake this for a Disney Channel original movie. Hopefully my color correction is fine. I used my Elgato game capture for this. I need a proper VHS archival system. Suggestions are appreciated. I do read those comments. With all that out of the way, let the movie begin. The story follows the Wheeler family, specifically one Gunther Wheeler, moving from New York City to a much smaller community. What's this? Jello. I, I mean, just a little welcome to the neighborhood gift for you and your family from the park. So, we're welcoming the new neighbor in an overly happy fashion, with a big old plate of green jello. This was definitely made by Mormons. I live next door to Beaver Cleaver. Needless to say, Gunther isn't too hot on moving into a small town, especially when his neighbors are a bunch of overexcitable, awkward Mormon nerds. The worst kind of nerds. Trust me, I used to be one. Not that I was ever excitable. Awkward, definitely. I was actually worse at socializing then than I am now. Boy, that's a scary thought. It's established pretty early on that Gunther is particularly lazy. Though to be fair, if I had to put up with the Planeteers for years on end, I'd probably want a break too. Andrew's lucky, he didn't have to deal with any of that. He just became obsessed with ants instead. Did you know that combined? All ants in the world, together, were just about as much as all human beings? Oh, I find that fascinating. I don't know why Kyle Howard never got a whole lot of acting work afterwards. He does still act to this day, though it's mostly small parts for a few episodes of a show, things like that. At least as far as I can tell, I'll admit I'm no expert, I just looked him up on IMDb. Okay, let's actually review this movie from the beginning now. We start with someone on their paper route, who we don't see much of in the movie, which I'm not mad about because that's actually a plot point. I am mad that we haven't seen more of the child whose superpower is jarring scene transitions. Oh boy. Oh yeah, I almost forgot about the name of this place. My pals and I are ready to migrate to Pleasant Valley. I was going to make a joke about how that sounds like a parody of middle of nowhere town names, but it turns out I can do a Google search and find something in just about every state that's named Pleasant Valley, including a neighborhood in Ogden, Utah, and considering most of Lucadia Film Corporation's movies were filmed in Utah, this film may very well take place in Pleasant Valley. Yes, Gunther's getup is weird. Even his parents are looking at him like he's crazy for wearing that in public. Though, to be fair, that's probably true of most people's parents. At least they're clever enough to use the quiet moving scenes to display some of the credits, rather than having them all be on a black screen at the beginning of the movie. Okay, I know it's a small town, but what kind of TV programming is this? How about a little help, son? Dad, 
You know how my back is. You got it. Now, Gunther's character is a pretty risky one to write. He's lazy, which is quite easy to make pretty unlikable. But, I don't know, I never had that problem here. Let's face it, a lot of kids don't listen to their parents very well, and even if they do, don't actually do what they say, at least not entirely. Gunther's not really mean either, he's kind of snarky, but he doesn't do anything to make him that disliked, much less irredeemable, and he does slowly change his ways throughout the movie. Gunther, that was really nice of you. Hey, what are big brothers for? Besides, he still has his allowance. I'm broke. Speaking of snarky, you must remember to check the chemicals for low chlorine. Then once a week, scraping algae off, but most importantly, you sweep the leaves out. They get into the filter, pressure will build up, and oh, and you have to flush the filter out and add new diatomaceous earth. The scene is actually kind of clever. It establishes that this talk has happened numerous times by using Gunther's snark without having to beat the audience over the head with the same speech again and again. Almost makes up for the cliched plot line. He runs into a mall employee he crushes on, but it's all relatively harmless, and after the first few sentences he does stop tripping over his own words. So, uh, you work here. To be fair, before texting and social media, we had to be awkward in person first. Unless you're me, I was meeting people over the internet before it was cool. Don't be like me, kids. And yes, fans of Supernatural, that is Harry Spangler himself, Travis Wester, playing this movie's bully Chad, who is somehow able to avoid being mocked for having a ponytail. Better than this nerd herd, though. Hey, Gunther! Hey, look, fellas, it's a nerd herd. I could really get used to living here. I'd advise you to stay away from her, Gunther. She could be hazardous to your health. Oh, yeah, and what are you, the Surgeon General? We know plenty of other babes. Oh, yeah. I can just imagine the herd of babes you guys hang with. Gunther, we know where every beautiful girl in this town lives. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's stalking. These guys got really creepy really fast. In fact, keep that in mind, we're going to compile a list of unattended crimes in Pleasant Valley. Seven? Eight? At the least, nine? the kids aren't their expected stereotypes. The heavy kid has no fat jokes through the movie, instead focusing on a running gag of him attempting to break a world record. And having memorized the world records book. Did you know, there are people with this extremely rare condition known as chronic cholecystitis? Like, go without sleep for five years. Thank you for that useless piece of trivia. No problem whatsoever. And speaking of running jokes... I'll just make a backup of this one. This is where the plot starts kicking off. The kid from the beginning of the movie is leaving for the summer, and they want Gunther to sub. Frankly, it really seems like his brother would be the better fit with these people, but just roll with it. At first he declines, but after... Uh, okay, what's even happening here? He shoots. And misses. Ha <laughs> ha, he scores. You know, I'd believe a bored teen doing that. I'd also believe this is why he only kept getting bit rolls. I mean, even if your acting was great, would you really want to put a movie where you stuff balls into your mouth on your resume? And Charlie snuck a walkie-talkie under Gunther's pillow, breaking and entering. No. Oh, I guess they had his brother put it there. Okay, scratch that crime then, but still, that's a little bit weird. Yeah, that'd probably be my reaction too. Okay, okay, after that odd segue, Gunther finds out that Allison here is also a fan of the Screamin' Banshees. No, not that one. And no, it's not an actual band, at least not at the time. Definitely sounds like a metal band, though. For some reason, they're performing in this tiny little town, which makes me think it's a small band and they're both hipsters. Though if that was the case, the bullies probably couldn't be scalping the tickets for 150 bucks. That seems like you want to see insane clown posse. Two hundred and fifty bucks, sucker. You got my money. That was not a cue to play that clip. 
Gunther tries to take the route of an advance on his allowance, which goes exactly where you think it goes. Would that be cash or check? Okay, I'll take that as a no. No credit! No payment plans. I want my money. Oh, $175 of it. And then the bullies demand even more, which makes this all completely pointless. It's like a telltale game. Gunther's taking that route one way or another. Also, guess which line was taken out of the edited version? Hypothetically speaking, of course. I don't. Well, then I got two words for you. Dental records. Yeah. Not to mention the edited version cuts down Gunther's talk with his father a bit, which might be better for the comedy, but the conversations make for more believable characters. They also cut Gunther asking his brother for money, which actually establishes that his family's had enough of him trying to mooch off of them. Which is weird, because it's a very short scene. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. What's up? Forget it, not another dime. The edit feels a bit jumpy early on, and I noticed that even back when, before I knew it was a cut-down version. <laughs> 530! And that's exactly how I felt waking up for calculus every morning. Those were dark times. Now to give Gunther some credit here, I do sympathize with him a bit. He's begrudgingly doing this, but it is a job in a totally new town with co-workers he doesn't have much in common with. The latter is something I deal with every single day. Though to give credit to me, at least I do actually wake myself up. And then they bang. Hard. I'm just gonna assume that happens in the completely unedited version. Oh wait, when did I start turning into the cinema snob? Uh, next thing you know I'm gonna be going bald. I'm already going white. A lot of this was also cut from the edited version, though that's probably because it drags on a bit. Come on, Gunther, get up! That certainly wasn't a weird musical cue at all. I'll just make a backup of this one. Now it's time to start our game of Paperboy. Gunther's lucky, he's using the Game Genie code where you can't lose subscribers. Think I'm kidding about the Paperboy analogy, wait until you see what the neighborhood is like. How hard can it be to toss a few papers? Mmm, that's how you know some delicious irony is coming up. Death <laughs> Not having a good time! Ugh. He thinks this is bad. Wait until he gets to the obstacle course at the end. So now we have improper restraint of dogs and battery to add to our list of crimes. Pretty sure chucking hard fruit at someone counts. My Mormon analogy is falling apart. What Mormons build a treehouse and throw crap at people? Oh, Naples, Mr. Why did you say so? Speak clear English next time, okay? Why, yes, they did cut that joke out of the edited version. Good. Yeah, they didn't cut this one out. Got the crazy man Koopa House. He's crazy. He don't... How do you say? He, uh, he step on one too many landmines, you know what I mean? <laughs> Not good. 
Uh, what the hell, movie? Edited to be family-friendly, my ass. I know Sly Cooper's been through a lot, but I didn't predict him becoming a crazy old man in a Utah suburb. You think I'm being silly, but who actually plays him is even better. We shall defend our island, no matter what the cost. We shall fight in the fields, and in the hills, and in the streets. We shall never surrender. So Winston Churchill. Stay loose, men. We got a bogey coming down the pike. Oh, keep your eyes open and your weapons loaded. <laughs> How do you like it? It's my own little pork chop hill. I have not yet begun to fight. Your eyes don't deceive you. Crazy Man Cooper is played by none other than Robert England, And this isn't like it's some pre-fame role either. He's already played Freddy Krueger several times by this point. I would make some fake Freddy line here, but Freddy here already plays the role quite well. Though once again I like the unedited version better, as it portrays Cooper as both crazy and slightly awkward. Though we still get this line. Well, the paper in the world, I had to get Grandpa Rambo! Because every kid is gonna know who Rambo is, thanks feature films for families! Although at least I didn't try and go meta and make a Nightmare on Elm Street reference. Although we could be pulling a Pokemon professor names trend, he is trying to reach Mapleson Street. So that's more assault, and I'm almost certain he's not licensed to keep all those geese. You better move, boy! They're trained to kill! Gunther just about quits after dealing with Freddy there, even though that could be easily remedied by going around his house. But then the most cliched thing possible happens. Take a guess who's at his last house. You. I've got one more house to go. Excuse me. Is that our paper? <laughs> Even though he's taking this job in the first place to pay for the tickets to impress her. But I guess it's just not totally worth it if she's not at the end of his route every day. Speaking of, Gunther is one smooth operator. You forgot this one. There's still some in it. <laughs> What's this? I don't know, what is it? It's the ticket to the Screaming Banshees concert. Wow. <laughs> That's weird. I, I have one just like it. Seriously, I'm just going to assume this is actually a Paperboy movie, just so I can say it's a good video game tie-in movie. Please, come in. I've just baked some delicious cookies. Yes, go into the stranger's house. Ah, more innocent times. This is Widow Hanson, by the way. What she is to baseball, I'll probably be to computers in about 50 years. The ball game is on at this time. Oh, I tape all the games. <laughs> oh, but the players today, they're too busy counting their money and doing underwear commercials. Hey now, sponsorships are important. Besides, if she thinks the commercials athletes were in back then were a little much, well... Oh! Old Spice Body Spray makes you smell like power! It's so powerful it sells itself in other people's commercials! Okay, now I'm pretty sure this is attempted murder. Gunther's lucky his brother likes instant gratification in his torment, or he might just decide not waking him up is better. You know, I'd make a waterboarding joke, but nobody's decided if those are torture or not. I didn't know Gunther and the dog had the same voice actor. 
At least the dog's content with making only half his shirt look like it came out of Larry the Cable Guy's wardrobe. Gunther then goes to collect money for the papers, only to find out he gets basically no tips. And then runs into this guy, who sneaks out on him. Hey! I don't know what he looks so smug about. I'm pretty sure if you stop paying for the paper, you stop getting the paper. And yes, the discussion about tips takes place while Fish is attempting to break the world pogo record. Which means you keep hearing both that and the counter clicking in the background. Also, the edit makes it look like Gunther asks why he's not getting tipped, and then just immediately storms off. I want to know why I'm not getting tipped! Come on, Fish! I think I have better skill in editing than that, and I'm an internet reviewer that constantly references other reviewers. <laughs> then we get to possibly the best part of the movie, where Gunther suits up to show his paper route who's boss. The name's Wheeler. Gunther. This is when Gunther figured out his future career as the next DLC character in Payday 2. I do have to wonder what the neighborhood is thinking when they see a teenager dressed up in a trash can lid, welcome mat, metal body armor, and skull mask riding around the neighborhood, especially in small town Utah. Part of how Gunther beats Crazy Man Cooper is by getting his geese drunk, which means another crime to add. Does that count as animal abuse too? I came, I saw, I conquered. Julius Caesar. Also, Gunther adding a source to his quote makes a lot more sense when you don't edit out Cooper doing the same. The editing in this later version sucks. I uh, say soldier, uh, but uh, what regiment you with? The paper brigade. So, that could have easily been one of her parents that picked up the paper. How convenient for Gunther. My paperboy joke might be falling apart, though, as we see Gunther collecting again, and getting much better tips this time around. Good morning, Mr. Lippman! <laughs> and then Gunther was kidnapped. Oh shit, I didn't think this through! Yes, the TV programming is a running gag, though I do appreciate that attention to detail. Still think that Payday 2 DLC needs to happen. Gunther acts super cocky when paying off the bullies, which makes me wonder why they didn't just end up demanding more money like last time. And this goes exactly where you think it does. Well, sort of. We're the new paper boy. Exactly are you talking about? Well, what I'm talking about is that you pencil neck pocket protector wearing dorks are out and we're in. Just think of us as your full time subs. Every morning, here's where the papers are dropped off and here's where we're going to pick them up. And if you go run into the paper about this, they'll make headline news in the obituaries. Yep, the bullies take over the paper route, even though they know nothing about delivering papers. Haven't these idiots heard of a protection scheme? Amateurs! Paper. Gunther wusses out, and even the bullies laugh that he was intimidated at the language yeah. they used. That's right. Though they do actually gut punch him. Yeah, somehow I don't think it was your language, I think it was the assault and battery. Speaking of which... In the original, they actually do this after Gunther cooperates, as a warning, they say. In the edit, it sort of just looks like they gut-punch him suddenly and take everything by force, kind of like the beginning of Double Dragon, which makes everyone's reactions really puzzling. The nerd herd still acts like he just handed it over. Love to see you guys take a punch. This is one of the only series of changes I potentially like better, though, as the original makes it seem like he's just fine handing over the paper route, 
though not unjustifiably so, complete with a scene of him being chided by his crush there, and plus the scene of his father saying how proud he is of him after the route's taken, like everyone's pressuring him into making the decision to take the route back. The edited version makes his visit to Hansen and his decision to take the route back seem much more like his own. Though credit to the original, his decision seems to happen after his visit to Hansen. A more cliched film would have had him decide this after Allison, but he seems more annoyed than anything for being chewed out by her. If I never hear the words paper out again, it'll be too soon. Come in! I'm just pulling some cookies out of the oven. Okay, is Miss Hansen just always baking cookies? Who does she give them to if no one visits? Her anniversary is on the same day as the concert he plans on going to. And you can see exactly where this is going. Yeah, I'm not exactly spoiling much by saying this. You can see the plot point coming from a mile away once it arrives. But it is a nice departure from the usual save the day, get the girl sort of routine. So I can see why feature films for families pick this up. It has Christian values without being downright pandering. Guys, why are you just sitting around? What do you say we go get our routes back? Yeah! Yeah! Whoa, 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 hold it. How are we going to do that? I, I've got a plan. Excellent. We're going to call the cops. Actually, they plan their own string of illegal activity, as if this was some sort of paperboy turf war. Looks like it's time for Operation Get Our Routes Back. You know, operations tend to have code names, so people who might be listening in can't, you know, guess what you're talking about. Oh, shut up. Besides, their code name isn't much better. Operation Humiliate and Destroy is underway. Now, I'd have personally gone with something like Operation Pulp Fiction, but given the kids we're dealing with, I don't think they'll ever see that movie. First step of the plan is disable their car to get them on equal footing. How? Good old-fashioned gas siphoning. Okay, time out. Family movie. I'm pretty sure Fish needs to see poison control. Empty. I just put two bucks in this thing. Nowadays, you're lucky if that'll even get you up the street. We don't get paid. All right, here he comes. What's with the blips from the treehouse scope? I don't think these kids have or need sonar equipment. Were, were those rocks? And the treehouse has a water cannon too? Who are these people, the kids next door? And then they douse him with what I assume is Nickelodeon slime. And Parmesan? Oh look, they actually put the dog on a chain, and then one of the nerd herd lets them loose. Pretty sure that's a crime, but I don't know what to call it. Destruction of property? I'm, I'm not a lawyer. Then they lure the bullies into Crazy Man Cooper's yard for one final round of assault and battery. Morning, boys! <laughs> they friggin' unload on them, too. They're gonna feel those bolts for days. Fire! Most of what follows is Pratt Falls, though there is actually a rather forceful punch in the original, blood and all. Not to mention, for some bizarre reason, they edit the part where the quiet kid's the one to hurl insults at the bullies. You're still a bunch of losers! And you're not a fun a bunch of good for nothing! Spam for free! Two time losing! Low red hearts! Why? They're not anything vulgar, and otherwise the kid has almost no lines at all. Also, what I didn't spoil about the plot twist at the end yet is Gunther sends his little brother on his date with Allison and purposely didn't explain what was going on. Because that's not weird in the slightest. Also in the edit, they leave out how she gets him to tell. I promised him I wouldn't tell it. Oh, but you want to tell me. Complete with a sax backing track, too. At least that's one major edit I can comprehend. And then the movie ends on this, complete with the old lady watching, which is also edited for the latter version. Well, at least the suggestive eyebrows part. That's the Paper Brigade. 
I felt it was obscure enough I had to spotlight it, especially with the confusion surrounding it for some reason. It's entertaining, it doesn't follow every rote stereotype and trope of the time, and the actors turn in a good performance, especially Howard England, even Wester, and I can't think of anyone who dragged things down, despite most of the cast being child actors. Now, from what I know about film, that's a hard feat to pull off with child actors. So if you want a family movie that doesn't treat your children like idiots, it's easy enough to find either VHS version of this movie, or the DVD on basically any online reseller site. And no, I don't know why they renamed the edit to Gunther and the Paper Brigade, but at least it means it's easy enough to tell the difference. I'd recommend this version, even though I did grow up with the other one, but then I'd just be letting nostalgia do my talking. Next up is Oxid, from my gaming compatriot. I promise. Till next time.